Good morning and welcome to the Forex Daily Update, brought to you by Pepperstone on Monday the 11th of February 2019. I'm Darren Sindon and you can follow me throughout the day on Twitter by using at DS underscore Pepperstone. OK, let's kick off with a look at the overnight changes and price moves to be aware of. Uh, as it's a Monday, of course, we'll look at these from a weekly perspective. First of all, then, um, pretty decent losses for the euro and the pound sterling against uh, the US dollar over the course of the last week. But they were put into the shade by moves in Australasia, the Aussie dollar and the New Zealand dollar both falling by around 1.8% against the US dollar over the course of last week. And principally, uh, those moves were driven by concerns over the state of the Australian economy and the possibility of RBA rate cuts in 2019 now. Uh, so a bit of a 180 degree swing around uh, prospects there and sentiment towards the Australian economy. Uh, Canada was also on the back foot against uh, the US dollar over the course of the last week. Uh, the Canadian dollar down by around 1.4% against uh, its US rival. It wasn't the only commodity-related currency uh, to lose ground uh, against the greenback. Uh, the Brazilian real, uh, the dollar took 1.9% off of the Brazilian currency over the last seven days. Is the market honeymoon uh, with uh, President Bolsonaro coming to an end? It would be prematurely if it was, but uh, we can't uh, rule that out. Uh, staying with commodity-related currencies, the US dollar took 1.41% off of the South African rand over the last seven days. Dollar index for its part capitalising on the weakness of sterling of the euro and uh, of the Australian dollar to trade up to 96.67 uh, up by around 0.87% over the course of the last week. Okay then what's on the calendar events that may move the markets today? A pretty light calendar to ease us into this week. Uh, we start with an ongoing meeting of the Eurogroup European Ministers uh, convening and there will also be talks between uh, Brussels and the UK over Brexit. Uh, at 7.30 we will have uh, Swiss Consumer Price Index data for January uh, and then at 9.30 GMT we will have GDP data out of the UK for the fourth quarter 2018 looking for annualised growth rates of 1.4% and quarter-on-quarter -quarter growth of uh, plus 0.2%. So let's see if we deviate from those at all. We'll also have manufacturing production and industrial production data out of the UK for December at the same time, as well as uh, a monthly read for GDP for the UK for December. Of course, that'll be wrapped up into that Q4 data. And then that's it, really. <coughs> Uh, for uh, major data this morning, uh, we will see uh, unit labour cost data, or should see unit labour cost data for Q4 out of the States released at some point this afternoon. Uh, and the last uh, of the key data on the calendar today will be at 21.45 out of New Zealand, electronic card retail sales data for the month of January. OK, breaking news and comment then. Let's caught my eye overnight. And first of all, a state-run newspaper says that China's Q1 GDP growth could slow to 6% in 2019. And that would be the slowest pace of growth in the country since records began in the 1990s. And that according to the Financial Times. US-China trade talks will resume again in Beijing this week, uh, though the two sides still seem far away from concluding a deal ahead of that important March 1st deadline that the Americans have imposed. Russian bonds have been upgraded by Moody's uh, to investment grade from junk. Uh, Moody's was the last of the big three uh, ratings agencies to do so. The pretty impressive performance from Russia really when you consider uh, the degree of US sanctions and the volatility in oil prices. So Russian bonds back at investment grade. And a quick look at Mexican car production, uh, which rose by 9.9% year over year in January to uh, 333,000 plus units. Uh, exports of autos from the country were up 4.9% to 242,000 units over the same period. Uh, so a pretty impressive boost to the US, sorry, to the Mexican economy for new President AMLO. Uh, and it shows that uh, how, just how important this trade in autos is uh, between Mexico and the US as well. OK, food for thought, something to take away with you into the trading day and beyond. Uh, why not think about this? We're two thirds of the way through uh, Q4 earnings season in the US and a chance to have a look at how the report card is stacking up so far. So 66% of US 500 uh, index stocks have reported Q4 numbers so far. I think we've got another 65 uh, individual stocks to come this week. 71% of uh, those that have reported have shown EPS growth earnings per share growth in excess of the five year average for the index. However, uh, earnings are beating by an average of 4% in Q4. Uh, that figure is lower 
uh, than the rate seen every day over the previous five years. So earnings are growing, but the rate of growth is slowing uh, as far as uh, uh, the US 500 index is at, or appears to be at this stage in the game, I should say. Uh, the chart to our right hand side is a sectorial breakdown showing uh, beats, misses, and inline um, numbers uh, green for beats, uh, red for misses, as you might expect, and uh, the yellow bars are those percentage of companies reporting in line. So, worth having a look at that and which sectors are beating and which are missing. OK, please take a moment to read this risk warning. Trading CFDs and foreign exchange on margin can be a risky business if you're in any doubt about those risks or the suitability of CFDs for you. Uh, then please do contact your Pepperstone uh, account manager and they'll be happy to take you through that. And as I say, do read this risk warning thoroughly from top to bottom. Thank you for your time today. Speak to you tomorrow.